on today's Apple Daily. What Apple's recent products mean going forward. So right up front, this video is going to contain a lot of speculation. This is not news or leaks, but analysis based on past performance and hopefully some common sense. For the latest Apple news, rumors and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. Now, there wasn't a huge amount of new news today. A lot of sites were just talking in general about AirPods Max, and there was a few little bits about Apple Car, which I feel like needs its own video as well. So if you want to know more about Apple's Project Titan car, then smash the like button and let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because things are going to get interesting from here on out. But as a general rule, we will still be doing our usual news shows at 12 UTC every weekday, so that you keep up to date with all things Apple. However, today we are going for a little bit of a deep dive into naming and where the product lines should be going from here, where we should fill in some gaps. Now I've complained in the past that Apple completely sucks at naming things. I'm hoping that with the M1 Max and their kind of fresh start, we could see a much simpler naming scheme going forwards without having to worry about what particular processor happens to be in anything. So we'll run through the ranges that Apple offers right now and see what would make the ranges easier for people to understand and if there could be any gaps that Apple may need to fill with new products. And we'll start off with iPhones because this is probably the most complete range and in all honesty it is Apple's core product right now. As it stands in price from low to high we have $399 iPhone SE, $499 iPhone XR, 599 iPhone 11, 699 iPhone 12 mini, 799 iPhone 12, 999 iPhone 12 Pro, and 1099 iPhone 12 Pro Max. So this is almost our template for what we need. Devices with older tech come under the SE banner, mini for smaller, Pro and Max for, you know, the higher end and bigger stuff. They also hit pretty much every price point between $400 um, all the way up to 1100 with just one gap at 900 That also fits with what we see in the audio category, but I'm not going to go too deep into Beats, uh, but the fact that you can get a Beats Flex for $49 is amazing value if you need a, a backup to keep in your gym bag or something like that. On the AirPods side, we have $159 AirPods, $249 AirPods Pro, and $549 AirPods Max. Just joining the family this week. Assuming Apple wants to hit a bunch more price points, we have rumours of a third gen AirPods which would likely replace the $159 starting point and a lower cost version of the AirPods Max with a sport branding, according to John Prosser, at $349. I could see the classic AirPods returning at $99, perhaps with AirPods SE branding, to fill this range right out, especially if Apple goes fully portless on next year's iPhones. It would be great to have a really low price wireless offering. Next, Apple Watch. For the Apple Watch, we have a range again, though this one is more confusing, name and display sizes to identify the lines. This whole range could easily be brought in line with the iPhone. So we have the $199 Apple Watch uh, Series 3 38 mm $229 Series 3 42 mm let's call that a max, $279 Apple Watch SE, $299 Apple Watch SE Max, $399 Apple Watch Series 6, and then Series 6 Max at $429. Then you can call the stainless steel versions Pros, and that's nice and simple, because it even ties in with the materials in iPhone Pros. Coming over to the iPads, this is another area where naming could be improved. Right now we have the $329 iPad, $399 iPad Mini, $599 iPad Air, $799 iPad Pro 11 inch, and $999 iPad Pro 12.9 inch. I'd personally give the base iPad the SE name, as it tends to be a couple of years behind on the chip technology. The original iPad was always $499, so that's where I'd fill that gap, with the Air taking the new design language at $599, then iPad Pro at $799, and rename the 12.9 inch as the Pro Max. Nice and easy. Max, here's the fun part. We have $699 Mac Mini with M1, $999 MacBook Air with M1, 1099 MacBook 21.5 inch, 1299 MacBook Pro 13 inch, 1799 is the start point for iMac 27 inch, 2399 for the MacBook Pro 16 inch, 4999 for the iMac Pro, and 5999 for the Mac Pro. 
Here we've got lots of room to expand, mainly because with the advent of M1, there's just one version of each of these new Apple Silicon Macs for each form factor. So we're just focusing on starting prices for now, as with everything else. Let's fast forward a year as well, so we have a full range to flesh this out. We'll assume that everything here with M1 moves directly onto an M2 as well, and then M1Xs, M2Xs for the higher range stuff. Start the range with a Mac Mini SE. I predicted it way back in September, and I won't stop going on about it until it happens. 4 dollars with M1 and maybe fanless. The price is doable and I think that it could fit into a smaller housing, maybe Apple TV size and maybe polycarbonate like the Apple TV. Then $6.99 for the Mac Mini with M2 chip, $7.99 for a new MacBook Air SE, that's the M1 model, maybe with 128 gigs of onboard storage, $9.99 for the MacBook Air M2, $10.99 for the new iMacs which will probably be launching in March with the M1X. Uh, $12.99 for the MacBook Pro, that's our M2 version now. $17.99 for the iMac Max. Okay, that name's a little bit janky. Uh, should we keep the iMac name, or is that something that might get updated? I feel like iMac is kind of iconic, but if they were ever going to rename it, now would be the time, and they don't seem to like eyes in their names anymore. Then we go up to $23.99 for the MacBook Pro Max. Uh, that would be your 16-inch model, again in March. $3999 for an iMac Pro, that would be the smaller size in June, $4999 for an iMac Pro Max, and $5999 for the Mac Pro, all in June at WWDC. Now, I'm not sure if we'll st still need iMac Pro or Mac Pro at the current price, but up to this point, that is what I would do. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments because I think this is a really fascinating thing where we could potentially bring everything in line and kind of know SE is our starting point for everything, then we go up to the baseline, then we go up to uh, an Air or a Pro, depending on how much power or how much performance we need. And then if you want something bigger, you go for the Max one. It makes all the sense in the world. By the way, I was writing this script last night whilst watching SpaceX do one of the most incredible flights I've ever seen, Starship SN8, uh, which is 50 meters tall, nine meters across, launching, losing an engine part way up, compensating with the other two, flipping over at the top at around about 12 and a half kilometers, relighting a couple of the engines after falling back horizontally, flipping over and being so close to a perfect landing when one of the engines cuts out and the other one really tries hard to compensate for it but it hits the ground a little bit hard and uh, and bursts um, but it was an absolutely incredible thing to watch uh, i do encourage you to go out and watch the full videos of these check out everyday astronaut um, Tim Dodd has some of the most amazing video. He was about five miles away from uh, the whole thing taking place and could not believe his eyes. So I really encourage you to go and check that out. Um, I am a massive space nerd. I will probably do a couple of spacey themed episodes at some point. But also let me know if you are super interested in the Apple Car stuff and I will do a bunch of research. Um, coming up this weekend, I will be talking to Daniel about the AirPods Max um, to actually find out why he thinks they're going to sound as good as he does. Uh, that will be really fascinating. So that will be coming out early-ish next week. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on next week. And obviously we'll have real reviews of them as well, hopefully as they start to arrive with reviewers. Um, in fact, we might even get those by the end of this week. Who knows? It depends when Apple has decided to uh, ship them out. But otherwise, uh, it might be more like with the M1 Max, where they just kind of arrive with reviewers the same day as the general public gets them exciting either way thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit like uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing and i'll see you in the next one thanks so much